You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have people that relate and recall moments of their lives that were were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect to get some tips and takeaways from each of my special guests. My podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m., Pacific Standard Time on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I do appreciate that. And I do do gratitude keynote speaking and gratitude coaching. If you'd like to reach me and get me at thatgratitudeguy.com or email at david at thatgratitudeguy.com as well. So let me get on with the show and introduce my guest, which is always my highlight of my weekly podcast is my guest. This week is no exception. So let me tell you just a little bit about Diane. Diane Solano is a health podcaster that believes that a healthy body is the foundation that allows you to live a life of purpose. Guest highlighted on our show, Empowered Through Health, on the Transformation Talk Radio as well. Find the root cause and deep healing all about, it's all about the body, mind, and spirit. Diana, Diane is also an RNCP and ROHP, a registered orthomolecular nutritional consultant practitioner, a former teacher at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition, and an active member of the International Organization of Nutritional Consultants. Her practice has expanded into the field of functional medicine and has worked closely with elite clinical nutrition experts in both the U.S. and Canada. Within the past year, Diane has expanded her health and wellness business into health and wealth creation by becoming a diamond distribution partner for Organo Worldwide. Motivated by being a single mother, she has become a model mompreneur, I love that, building and leading an international organization in less than five years with a sales volume of over $7 million, quite impressive. Her passion is now helping and developing others in their entrepreneurship to create the ultimate freedoms of health and wealth, consciousness, and expansion. Diane, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, David. Wow, I'm listening to that going, oh my gosh, time flies and oh boy, have I been on my journey. <laughs> no question, quite a journey. And I always start out the podcast just to give people a context, tell the listeners and viewers, because it goes out on YouTube and on the radio network as well, how you and I met. We met through this podcast platform. We both were really passionate about a message and uh, it was through the Cornelius Stephanie show where we, you know, obviously a team meeting within all the podcasters, all of us grouped together that are waking up the new levels of consciousness, consciousness, which is really with our voices and our message. So you and I definitely connected. I, I love your work. I am a huge, huge, huge advocate for high frequency emotions and gratitude is definitely right at the top. So you are doing profound work and it applies in every single aspect of every single person's life, irrelevant of what they do and where they're going and what their attributions and goals are. That is a massive driving force. Absolutely. 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 And and something, and thank you for saying that. I do feel very strongly about it, as you can imagine. So for the benefit of the listeners, back up a little bit, because I've gotten to know you relatively well. And so I kind of know a little bit about your story and you've been through some definite uh, I don't want to say not only ups and downs, but just transitions in your life. So maybe walk back uh, near the beginning, maybe after growing up in college and that type of thing and kind of start and tell us a little bit about the journey of Diane. Well, you know, it all started off with the field of health and wellness. I, I suffered from health challenges. My father suffered from health challenges. I started to learn very quickly at an early age in my early 20s that a lot of my health conditions had to do with not making proper, profound proper food choices, really understanding the health of the body from a root cause. So that led me on to the journey of the first phase of my growth, which was health and wellness, you know, all to do with all natural, understanding whole foods versus processed foods, understanding the power of nutrition and how it drives biochemistry, how the conventional medical model, even though there's a place for it, really didn't address root causes. And I started to see and experience and learn um, people that were going through radical illnesses with really no answers. 
when they started opening up the doors to natural and we started to really implement natural strategies that got to root causes, things that fed the body, that allowed it to grow and thrive. If you, if you gave it a thriving uh, environment, it would, it would just light up. I mean, bodies are really honest. And, and what I learned very early as well is that if you don't have health, you don't have anything. You know, there's so many people throughout the years I've met with millions of dollars, tons of money, they would pay anything to get their health back. Right. And one of the areas I saw that was very commonly linked to ill health was not only food choices, but poor emotions, mm. stress. Stress was a very big culprit and a driving force to a lot of people's debilitation. And, and stress will knock you out wherever your weaknesses lie genetically. Um, it, it'll just knock you out wherever your weakness is, is, whatever your Achilles heels is, that is where it's going to show up. And I myself went through chronic stress, you know, in my late uh, 20s, early 30s, where I was doing it all. I had the career, I was, you know, gutting out a house, I was working night shifts as well, and uh, running two clinics at the same time. And it was just, I just felt like I could do everything because I had that physiology. I was training as well twice as the day at the gym um, at an early fitness competition. And all of a sudden, I woke up one day dizzy and exhausted, and I was just not okay. And I realized I was driving so much stress. I just was all go, 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 go on, 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 on. And then I started to realize it's not always about what you eat, but it's mm -hmm. also about how much are you driving yourself? How much stress are you putting on your plate? Even good stress, but we got to mm -hmm. learn to, to dial it back. And then throughout the years, you know, in that journey, um, I started really looking back going, there are so many people that are doing everything right. And they're still not well, but there are people that are not doing everything right and are thriving and they're happy and they're grateful and they're in loving spaces and they're environments that allow them to thrive. And I started to learn there's more to this than just what you eat. Mm -hmm. And there's more to this than the proper exercise and, and the regimens. And, um, you know, it was kind of like getting lit up a little bit around this. And, and of course, throughout the journey of my career, I became a single mom. I wasn't expecting that to happen. And that's when the transition really hit when I started to realize, okay, as a single mom now trying to rebuild my life again, having new financial stressors on my plate. That's when I started to really dive deep in the whole frequency law and science of quantum physics and quantum healing. Mm -hmm. And gratitude is one of those frequencies that we speak on and we talk so much about on how it changes the resonance of the body. Healing happens. You know, the, the, the brain waves change when you bring in high frequency emotions and love, gratitude, appreciation, um, you know, hope, uh, understanding, joy, all those things, you know, they, they work so fast in the body physiology, faster than chemistry does. Think about it. When you have a big plate of dinner, you eat that dinner, it takes a while for you to break it down, digest it, break it into all the particles and parts you need for that meal. Yet if you close your eyes and you just think of, you know, any thought, maybe even a sexual one for a great example, just for, for a great example, your body chemistry will immediately respond mm -hmm. because it doesn't know the difference, right? The energy is lightning speed. It will deliver messages to your body in seconds. Mm -hmm. So love and gratitude can literally spin things around. So can anger and hate. So can frustration. Mm -hmm. So this is where I started to learn very quickly that how we think and how we feel has a profound effect, not only in our chemistry and our health, but also in the way we live our lives and how we create the life that we want to create. So that led me to the whole path of, man, we are more than just what we eat. It's, it is about our health. But when we start achieving that ultimate state of health, when we start feeling that balance and that joy, and we're feeling strong again in our bodies, now what's next? Mm -hmm. What is next for us? Where can we live our fullest potential? And that's where, you know, it started off as health and wellness, but it has really exploded over and beyond that space. So that's where my second phase of my career took off. And it was all around leveraging your life. Because I learned that a lot of people are stuck in jobs, they're stuck in relationships, they're stuck in scenarios where they're either trading time for money, or they're feeling they're at a dead end space. And that's old programming we don't need to show up that way anymore based on society standards or old programs that belief systems that were instilled in us. We're really at a space and time in our lives where we can really show up to be our authentic selves. 
So it really is about me now helping others live their authentic selves. And that's, that's the journey, George, uh, David, you know, this is where for me, it was just about a wake up call. So now it's just leading others down that similar path that resonate with, with, with a similar message. No, sometimes I'm really, that's fantastic. And sometimes I'm always amazed by how something happens. For instance, you said, all of a sudden I woke up one day and you described all the things you're doing and working out and doing this and, and, and um, the job and all the different kinds of things you're doing, fixing the house. What do you think happened that morning? What was it about that day that made a difference? Can you recall back thinking that something just clicked? Because sometimes it's like you feel you're going to go left for a bunch of days and finally wake up one day, I'm going to now go right. What do you think happened on that day for you? What you mean when I, when I, when you kind of said, I'm not going to do this anymore. Oh, I physically couldn't. I I got to a point where my adrenals, those are the little glands that handle your stress and, you know, that sit above your kidneys for your listeners that may not know that they're the, they're the little powerhouses that manage stress response. I just physically couldn't do it anymore. I got to the point where I woke up one day and I just, you know, when you just kind of wake up in the morning, you roll over to bed and the room just started spinning like bad and I remember my heart was racing and I sat up and I'm like what just happened and you know I I started just not feeling well and I started feeling really weak and I couldn't process information very quickly Mm. anymore and I realized that anything that was loud anything was too stimulating I couldn't handle it I couldn't handle blood pressure changes so you know taking a shower for example you know you bend over you grab the shampoo the conditioner Mm -hmm. I couldn't even do that I had to literally keep my head straight and just kind of crouch down and grab the soap or whatever, I had to sleep sitting down. And this lasted for almost two years. It was oh my goodness, bad. My physical body, and this is what happens. And this is what I love about the body. It's so intelligent. It really is. It's magical. It basically was yelling at me saying, stop. You have to stop. And, you know, one of our podcasters, um, oh, I forgot her name. She has a really great sentence and she really nails it. She says how the body will whisper before it screams. Mm, my body was whispering it It was Mm -hmm. telling me to slow down but i wasn't listening because i was strong and i was healthy and i was vibrant and i was go 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 and then it got to a point where it's like enough's enough and this is where i tell people bodies are really honest they don't lie so my body was just telling me you really need to slow down i can't do this anymore and if you don't stop it's going to get worse and that's where we really have to listen to that innate of intelligence and and so that was it uh, David, you know, I, I physically, my body just wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. And it was frustrating because I used to t- give people the analogy. I felt like I was this, you know, shiny Lamborghini car with no engine. Mm, you know, good looked, analogy. It looked great on the outside. Nobody could understand what was wrong with me, but right. I felt so weak. And I remember telling people, practitioners, because I started visiting many and learning more. I was already in the field. Imagine that. It was, it was very frustrating. And I would just tell them I felt like I was an 80 year old woman trapped in a Mm. 20 year old's body. It was the most craziest thing. I wasn't in pain. I just felt exhausted and weak. And that's when, you know, of course, over time I started realizing, yeah, my DHEA levels were super low. My cortisol levels were super low. That's all indicative of very high driven stress. Um, You know, going back to the hormonal cascade, there was things I needed to nurture and bring back to life again. And that's what kind of made me stop and just take, look back and saying, okay, you know, what needs to change? And the next phases of my life started to uncover all the importance of self-care, of listening to intuition, of dancing in the high frequency emotions mm-hmm. um, and getting rid of things that don't serve our lives. Sometimes we're in toxic relationships. Sometimes we're are in, like I said, in toxic jobs or scenarios or, or you know, we gotta become really radically honest with ourselves in order for change to happen. That, that's up to us. No one right. else is going to do it for you. Exactly. So that's where, that's where the, the call started happening, going, you know, you got to expand and get bigger. And I think that's everyone's journey. The details are different, but all of us go through something that makes us potentially grow out of it. Well, and when I think about, too, something that's really amazing to me is you see these people, oh, I, whether it was weight or changing their life or whatever, I did this in 30 days or 60 days or six months, but two years, what kept you focused on the prize, if you will, to keep going forward? That's a long time to go through a transition with those many things in your life. What kind of kept you going? We can talk. I want to ask you about your gratitude practice in a moment too, but, and that may have been part of it, but what kept you going to have that sort of resolve to get out, come out on the other side? I had so much to be excited about. I just wanted my life back. 
-hmm. And I just knew that, you know, some way, somehow, if I just kept on looking for the answers, something would have to show up. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly it. I never gave up hope. I just kept on saying, you know, there's got to be something out there. I got to keep asking questions. I got to keep open, visiting new practitioners, looking at new modalities, trying new blood work. Um, there were a lot of little things and, and the micro, it micro got it better, but you know, I started to also listen to my body. I knew when I pushed too much, when I had to stop. So I started listening more. So that's one important piece is that we have to really listen to ourselves when we start feeling like enough's enough. If you need to stop that, you know, exercise that you're doing, cause it's too intense, then maybe you do need to dial it back your body's always, there's an intelligence that we stop listening to. And, and that was my big lesson. I had to really listen when it was getting tired that it needed to just rest now. Mm -hmm. And I needed to just get to bed by a certain time. And I needed to not neglect meals and all these little things that I was doing because I, heck I could, I could, so I did. And it was just foolish, <laughs> but yeah. that's where wisdom lies. Now I do have to say things got significantly better when I started using um, medicinal mushrooms. I started noticing a massive difference. And I had a couple of clients of mine who went through similar symptoms. And I noticed that the minute we started getting them into something called fractal patterns, fractals are uh, nature's intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, if people look into the intelligence of mother nature, there's, it's not a linear mathematical equation. It's very much a complex one. And every single living organism out there from food to plants all have fractal patterns. And they communicate with our 100 trillion cells because there's innate intelligence. Call it what you want. Call it divine. Call it the universe. Call it Buddha. Call it what you want. There is an intelligence that's proven out there that really does exist and flows through all of us. So that being said, I started studying more on the power of nature. Mm. Simple things like waking up in the morning and, and eye gazing to the sun. It resets your melatonin. It resets your... Um, your serotonin levels, right? Your serotonin is your feel good, happy hormone that comes on in the day when the night, you know, comes along and the darkness hits our eyes. That's when we produce melatonin. So when we get back to nature, back to circadian rhythms, we start, you know, getting our blue light eye blocker glasses to start reducing the, the, the Wi-Fi lights that we're getting at night. We start helping our hormone signals to going back to the way we were wired for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So when I started to learn the intelligence of using nature to nurture myself back, that's when I noticed a difference. Medicinal mushrooms just happened to be one of those many things I did, but I noticed a profound difference. I felt this tremendous weakness go away. I started noticing that the spinning that I would got so easily wouldn't show up anymore. Um, now, this wasn't an excuse to push hard as the way I did, but at least the recovery was so profound and I never felt that level of weakness ever again. So that's what led me down the path of the whole medicinal mushroom passion of mine, which people hear me speak on very often. And, and I do now lecture around the world and teach other health leaders and influencers on how to incorporate medicinal mushrooms into their practices, how to add it to their uh, regimes, because it really is the intelligence of nature in the earth that is starting to turn things around. And in the studying of nature, we also learn the power of heart coherence. Heart coherence, when, when you go into love and gratitude, when you go into these high frequency emotions, your heart and the resonance, something called HRV, which is a measurement that you can measure. I mean, I have an aura ring that tells me my heart coherence. It tells me my sleep cycles. There's many different apps now that can tell you where your level of your heart resonance is at. Oh, look at you, love it, see? <laughs> and that's when you realize, oh my gosh, we are so profoundly intelligent. We got away from that. Right. So, so when I started to learn the power of love and gratitude and going into that space, well, when you go into high HRV, that heart coherence, there is a resonance to the earth's electromagnetic frequency and it, and it, and it, and it integrates and it, it communicates. And when you look at the way mammals and every little living organism, whether it's a little cat, or a little whale or a dog or a human being, the first thing that develops in the embryonic sequence is the heart. The mm -hmm. heart are the, is the first cell to form. Right. The brain isn't even formed yet. Mm -hmm. The heart is the first organ because it needs to communicate with the earth. There is an intelligence that's flowing through all of us. And it's just, it just makes me in awe. It knocks me to my knees realizing I'm so humbled by it. Mm -hmm. So this is where I just started to really realize and 
stepping into a higher power that we all have. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast and you're alive and well, you have this too. So following practices, you don't need to know the science, but you need to go into the simplicity of getting into love and gratitude, getting into higher frequencies, connecting with the earth electromagnetic frequency, whether it's walking on the grass or just staring at the sun or just taking some deep breaths. It is so profoundly healing and the science is there now. And you mentioned love and gratitude. And of course, as that gratitude guy, it's one of the biggest things I uh, talk about all the time and speak and coach and, and write about and so on. What has been your gratitude practice? What does work best for Diane around gratitude? Well, I am so grateful all the time. And one thing I learned is that we shouldn't wait for our wealth to come before we're grateful. We shouldn't wait for our health to come before we're grateful for our health. We shouldn't wait and and wait for the love to show up in our lives before we're grateful. We need to be grateful before it shows up in real time. Because if you study and you learn the science behind energy and frequency, you have to be the vibration of before it shows up in 3D format, right? We are vibrational beings. We are 99.9% .9 energy, 0.001% matter. I mean, if anyone on this show resonates with this information and maybe they're dealing with something chronic, health-wise or life-wise, the You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza, I think was one of my biggest mentors who really changed my life. Uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton does some great work, uh, Biology of Belief. These are fantastic resources for anyone in that space. But this is where I started to learn, you got to be it before it shows up for you. Mm -hmm. So I remember just every night I go to bed, I do not close my eyes without having a deep gratitude of life and prayer. And, and now with my son, who's now, you know, 10 years old, we do this together. I'm like, baby, close your eyes. And what are you grateful for? Let's just, just be in gratitude all the time. I can think about it. Even the simplest thing, like just, you know, petting my cat and listening to him purr. It's like, wow, you're alive. You've got this, this power to you. You're so loving. I'm just going to drink that space and be in gratitude for you for being in front of me. And the more we do that, the more magical things show up in our lives because right. we are carrying on that frequency. So my gratitude um, a practice is just being present and going into heart and just really connecting. Um, there are a lot of people that do gratitude journals. I'm terrible at writing things down all the time. I just feel like it's another thing to do because I'm always <laughs> writing, taking notes and teaching. I'm just more of that energy, heart, vibrational, emotional. That's just the way I'm wired. I think find a way that feels good for you. It shouldn't feel like work. It should feel joyful. So if being a gratitude for you means writing things down, then go for it. If gratitude for you means picking up the phone and telling someone and leaving them a voice note of how much you love them and how much you're grateful for them, do it, but just do it some way, shape or form. There is no right or wrong way. I think the important thing is that you're connecting and that it's really authentically coming from you. Yeah. And I think, and you can change it up because I, I get bored quickly. So if I'm told to do something every day for every day, I'll be like, okay, by day three, I want to change it up. Yeah. So it's okay to bounce from voicemail to a prayer, to, you know, a drawing, to, you know, a, a journal, but do it, do it because you will feel so amazing. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to get healthier. Yeah. You're going to call exactly. in some exciting things. You're going to see life from a different perspective and then magic shows up. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Absolutely. And Diane, I, I can't imagine there aren't people walking this earth all the time that haven't been or are where you were at that point, uh, where they are for that right now. And so for those people, again, listeners, viewers, what would kind of be a recipe that you would tell them, here's, I'm going to give you five or 10 things that you could really do to get on the right path. Having experienced that, I mean, I say to people standing on the stage, you know, I'm not teaching out of some book, these shoes, and I point to my feet, they've walked down this path and come back from trauma and, and death and destruction and so on and so forth. But how would you advise them and say, okay, here's what I'd like, here's some steps I'd like to give you to get on the right path. What would you tell them? I think we're all so unique. So I think what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the next. I think the one thing is that we, in order for us to start shifting things in our lives, I think we have to be radically honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's one exercise I did, um, David, and I have to tell you, it was a wake up call for me. And I actually offer this as a freebie on my website for people because you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And some right. of us don't even realize there are things that are draining us. 
So I call it an inventory, energy inventory guideline. Like it's a checklist, right? And mm -hmm. this, this exercise was given to me by Colette Baron reach the famous Hay House author. We did a co, we did a lot of projects together. And when I did her wealth energetics course, it was an energy inventory guide that I forever changed my life. And she said, mm -hmm. look, take a piece of paper. And this is what we do. We give you like a column of energy in and energy out. Very simple. There's things that are going to happen in your life and you're either going to fill you with energy or they're going to deplete you of energy. So just take inventory, grab a piece of paper. And for the next three days in your own privacy, I want you to write down everything that fills you up or depletes you. And I did that personally. And when I started to realize, man, when my house is messy, it's energy out. Mm. When I come home and my partner doesn't give me a hug, hello, or acknowledge me, that's energy out. When my son says, mommy, I love you and holds me, that's energy in. When I have to, I don't know, do the bookkeeping for my business, that's energy out. And I started taking energy inventory of how I felt. It either filled me up or it depleted me. It was so eye-opening, David, because sometimes we do things without realizing they're not serving us. So at that point, when you make your list and you look back going, man, I didn't realize not making my bed didn't feel good to me or not having a clean house didn't feel good to me or not eating healthy food didn't feel good to me. Well, now you can do something about it. Right. So you either, you know, like date it, delete it, disregard it, um, but find a solution around that. Do you need to outsource it? Do you need to just get rid of it out of your life? Is that a, and, and it's just amazing. So I think whatever we got to do in order to get on a better path, we have to take inventory of what we're doing right now. And some people know what it is, but some people don't. And somewhere, some people can fall in between. Like I knew some things, but I didn't realize others until I actually was really honest with myself. And I took my own inventory guides. So this is something I think is an important starting point. You have to start and acknowledge what's no longer working for you and then get ready for a change to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's up to you. But whatever change needs to happen, know that it won't happen until you allow it and are open to receiving something greater. There is a level of trust and surrendering, but the, that would have to be, I think, phase one, take inventory, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And phase two, you know, now what area, if you need to change someone, something really quickly, we got to figure out what that is. Is it your energy levels? Is it the physical pain that's happening in your body? Is it a toxic relationship? Because usually those are the most profound things we got to start working with, but right. where there's will, there's, there's, there's a way. And, um, you start now calling in a change into your life. And I think that's what starts putting people in the right direction. If I had to start somewhere quick list yes. of 10, you're going to hear me say this over and over again, whole foods, the less amount of labels, the better. I give people a three day whole food challenge. You got to eat foods that have no labels to them, oranges, apples, chicken breast, like all, none of that has a real label to it. There's no ingredients. Right. It is what it is. Nature's food. Number two, um, get on a bedtime schedule, get to bed at a certain time, get up at a certain time. If you put yourself on a schedule, your sleep will be enhanced. Number three, move your bowels. There are so many people that are not moving their bowels every 24 hours. You auto intoxicate. This is going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your energy. It's going to affect your long-term health. Bowels to me is one of the first areas I look for and sleep quality. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, sun gazing, um, looking at the sun, getting in touch with nature, feet on grass, hugging trees. Um, smelling the air, sitting out in your terrace, but you need to really go back to nature again. Um, I love gratitude. So let's put that in as number five, reading, uh, no, sorry, making a list of something that you're grateful for. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You could be grateful for something, even if it's Absolutely. just the air you're breathing today, but Absolutely. find that one thing and turn it around, mm -hmm. you know? And then from there, I would say, plug into something that makes you feel good, whether it's a comedy whether it's a feel good book, whether it's an Oprah Winfrey rerun show, whether it's a sex in the city reruns, I watch those all the time. They make me laugh. I mean, whatever it is that makes you smile and laugh, you got to plug into it. I don't care what it is. You got to make the time for that. You know, I don't even know what list I was on, but, but those are definitely some good starting points. Oh, those are excellent. And I think too, by the way, I'll put it in the show notes, but for those that are listening, what is your website? Oh, it's dianesolano.com. My name, D-I-A with two N's. That's, I think that's where people make a mistake. Diane, so D-I-A-N-N-E, Solano, S-O-L-A-N-O.com. That's where people can find my website. Um, you know, we have the list of our shows there as well. It's all just empowered through health. I highlight different health practitioners around the world that are doing fantastic work. 
and uh, are all incorporating some really wonderful modalities. It's all about giving people the resources out there to take the life that they currently have and, and just take it to the next level. That's what yeah. we want you to do. Level up. Yeah, this world absolutely. needs you to be your best. Absolutely. And I think, and then also you mentioned on your website, so is it energy inventory guide? Is that what it's called? Yep, yeah, It's a free em- energy inventory guide. They can just go and grab it. I mean, um, you know, I was going to put a loom video on there. So, you know, we'll get that up and going soon just to give people some instruction, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just a column, two columns. You need start taking inventory. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. And you're going to be so surprised if you really do this, you're going to look at your life going, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that, you know, this person drains me. I didn't realize that a messy house does this to me. I didn't realize, you know, not knowing what to wear every morning stresses me out. Right. Let's do something about it and let's yeah. change that around. It's so important. And I think it, just the number of things you said make me think of a number of other questions and we've got about five more minutes and we'll wrap up. But I just think it's interesting when somebody has a problem, somebody has an issue or something, half the battle is just acknowledging it. And then doing something about people, some people don't even acknowledge they have a problem. And they think, well, no wonder you don't even admit it to yourself when you talk about the body talking and the body, if you just listen to your body. And I I look at people that are not very healthy. In fact, I've said for many years, uh, and you and I probably said this to you before when you and I met, but the biggest question I have about my entire life is I don't understand why people don't take better care of themselves. You only have one body and there's all these artificial hips and knees and and replacing hearts and lungs and all this kind of thing. But the body wasn't designed to be abused. It was designed to be taken care of and nurtured and made healthy. And, and I think too, and I've got these, these lists and I'll go through them again too. uh, When we get to the end, one of the ones on that, and you said, there's so many lists you can do, but it's so huge for me is exercise. And, yes. and in fact, it was funny, I put on a, another uh, sort of a membership site I was in or actually a, a LinkedIn group. And I said, I walk eight to 10 miles a day. And somebody said, God, that seems like a lot of miles. And well, whatever. I mean, it's fine. But it's, it's two to two and a half hours out of my 12 hour day. But guess what I do? I listen to podcasts like your podcast, other ones I learned from. I listen to audible books. I make phone calls and make lists on the, the little notepad thing that I need. And all of a sudden, a two and a half hour walk of eight or nine or 10 miles seems like a half hour. So it just depends on how you position it. And, and, and so I think, so uh, I'm just gonna, I wanna kind of just go over these, these sort of, some of these takeaways. And also when you said something that I feel so strongly about, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And I was debating whether I would mention this or not, but I have a friend, very good friend and known him for many years. And with all the people I've ever met, maybe one of the wealthiest, it's just, and a wonderful person. But uh, he, I saw him about a year ago and he has Parkinson's and he can't even talk now. And he's like six months older than me. So, and he just is incredible. I can't say how wonderful this guy is. And he was so generous and so kind to me. And you, you don't think he'd give every penny he's ever made to have his health again. And so it's, it's all about really taking care of yourself. And that's why I said, I don't understand why people don't care, take care of themselves. And to some degree, when I, I really push gratitude as a very, very healthy coping mechanism in a world of many destructive and deadly coping mechanisms, why do people take drugs? Well, in my humble opinion, they, they'd rather transport, transport themselves to somewhere else because they don't like their current situation, but it can kill you and it can maim you and it can, and it can ruin your body and everything. And so I think in so many cases, people are looking for, um, for solutions and they want easy ones here, take a pill and call me tomorrow, but high frequency emotions. I really related to that. And then the proper food choices and really getting to the understanding the root causes of all this and stress. You mentioned stress too. People don't, they think about diet and exercise and so forth. And I remember another doctor friend of mine said he went through all the things smoking this, according to him, this was 30 years ago, smoking, drinking drugs, no exercise, being overweight. He listed all these things. He said, all that combined isn't as bad as what stress will do to you. And I just thought it was really interesting because that left an impression on me too. Uh, And as you said, then there's the people that are doing the right things as well, but leveraging your life, your body is so intelligent. The body is so honest, but it'll whisper to you at first. And then it yells, which I think is really good, but listening to ourselves. Oh, one more thing, Diane, before we do wrap up, I want, I spend a couple minutes on this. Explain to the listeners a little bit about how you get medicinal mushrooms and what form. And I know Organo, we didn't really talk about, but I know that's one way, but tell them a little bit about that because they may be interested to get that and find out how to, how to get a hold of that. Absolutely. So one thing you mentioned was people are reluctant about getting healthy because it takes work. Well, I love health hacks. That's one thing I did a lot of corporate Mm. programs for many years. People want quick, easy, effective, and that tastes good. And if they can do that, they're much more compliant. 
So that's why mm. I fell in love with medicinal mushrooms. And I fell in love with the company Organo was because they put medicinal mushrooms into coffee, tea, hot chocolate, things that people were already doing on mass scale that they no love and do. They don't forget to take. And the company just put the health in the habit and they alkalized the coffee and they made it anti-inflammatory and they made it a way to help with so much signaling in the body. So what I recommend to the listeners, watch this documentary it actually came out on Netflix. It's been translated in many different languages. It's called Fantastic Fungi. And it is the power behind medicinal mushrooms. It's done by Paul Stamets. He's a leading uh, medicinal mushroom expert in the world. Uh, you'll find him on YouTube, on TED Talks. And he talks about how medicinal mushrooms are actually changing the world. What they do is they go into the earth. They've been around longer than humans have. They have 50% of our DNA. And what's happened is that they communicate with the earth. They help heal plants, animals, and human bodies. So you'll see through the documentary, two hour documentary on how profound medicinal mushrooms are in health, in healing. There's many different types. There's many different levels. Organo just happens to have a patent on their extraction process. It makes them highly bioavailable. So whatever you take, you gotta make sure your body's actually receiving it, right? So, mm -hmm. and it has to taste good too, right. David, because if it tastes like mushroom soup, no one's gonna do it. So this right. company was really smart and their coffees taste like coffee. Their hot chocolate tastes like hot chocolate. I've got kids, animals, no known toxic dose, completely natural. And we were just seeing so many profound people having health transitions on it. So if they want to learn more about medicinal mushrooms, I highly recommend the documentary, Fantastic Fungi, or look under YouTube, Paul Stamets, TED Talks. Um, you'll have tons of content, tons of content. There's many types of, types of medicinal mushrooms. I love working with specific to Ganoderma, Rishi, Lion's Mane, um, Turkey Tail. Those are Cordyceps. Those are some of my favorites, but there's many. And uh, these are the products that are nature's intelligence. That's all it is put into a habit you already know of and do. So if people go to my website as well, we do have a trial packs. So people can, for a dollar <laughs> to $2 a cup, they can get a whole bunch of samples and play and try and see if it's for oh, them. Well, and, and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. So I try to find cost-effective, easy ways for people to start gaining health back and getting their power back into their lives because you are you know, how you show up in the world. And if we can get you feeling better, you're going to start doing amazing things in the world and whatever it is that you're good at, that's what you're here for. Exactly. And I remember, I remember growing up, I always chuckled at this statement. And then I realized how true it was when I was a kid, somebody said, you are what you eat. And I thought, what does that mean? And then later on in life, I, oh, I see what that means. I understand totally. So a couple of last comments. Organo, you mentioned, of course, but the dianesolano.com, where you can get the energy inventory guide and also about Organo products. Fantastic fungi, Paul Stamets, and there's a documentary, and he's also done some TED Talks. So let me wrap up with my last question I ask every single guest to close out the show. Oh, before I do that, I just want to mention this list because I really like this list you did. Uh, some things to get started right away. Whole foods, no labels. Get on a bedtime schedule. So powerful. Move the bowels. Eating the right things will help that so much, of course, too. Sun gazing, being outside, living in gratitude, and whether it's feeling it, writing it, saying it, whatever it might be as a list, uh, and then doing something that makes you feel good, like a comedy or, or something that makes you laugh, which I think is really powerful as well. So fantastic list there. And and again, Diane, thank you so much. So my last question is, uh, that it just happens to be my favorite question, but, and you only get to pick one thing. And that is, what do you know today that you would have liked to have known at 18 that would have helped you? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the power of leveraging. Because <sighs> when we're trading time for money, when we're doing it all by ourselves, when we don't use community, we burn ourselves out. Yeah. But if we learn how to leverage our time, we learn how to leverage our food, we learn how to leverage our, our community, we learn how to leverage our time, we can just show up more powerfully, not drain ourselves. I yeah. think that that's old programming that needs to go. So that's, that's one thing I wish I had learned earlier, because I, I believe a lot of the source of my stress was me doing it all by myself a good point and and you think of power of leveraging and i think of money too but as you say you're so right energy and and everything that we do it applies to so many parts of our lives so again well thank you so much and as i mentioned everyone thank you for tuning in listening and just as a reminder my podcast is downloaded every tuesday morning at 5 a.m on the transformation talk radio network is available on apple spotify and google please subscribe give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear always appreciated 
And I do know that people are struggling. Diane mentioned some of the people that she's come across and I do a lot of gratitude coaching. And so I do have a gratitude coaching program that will coach you to fully believe in you and can propel you forward to achieve anything your mind can conceive. The support you receive is unmatched and getting you to believe in you and make changes that you've been wanting and needing to make. Whether it's your finances, your relationships, your career, or your life's journey that you want to change, and this is a good program for you, gaining a complete understanding of your challenges, asking powerful questions, providing guidance, and a very high level of accountability, along with an attitude of gratitude, all combined to ensure your personal success. My four-month proprietary gratitude coaching program is $4,500, and from my podcast listeners, they get an extra month free. That's for four months, and you get a fifth month free, and just get a hold of me at david at thatgratitudeguy.com. And also one last thing, a lot of people like to get my Monday morning minute. If you'd like to get the 60 second video that comes out every Monday at 6 a.m., just go to your text and type in the number 22828. That's five digits, 22828. And in the little message box on your text, type in gratitude guy, all one word, and that'll send you a link and you can get signed up. So thank you again, Diane. Thank you all for listening and and viewing it, whether it's on YouTube or wherever else. And just remember what I always say, remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us, and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.